Hello there, Internet. So, I'm going to do a little short video here, partially in mind with uh, a brand new Patreon patron I've got recently, a former student at Sin Studio as well, uh, who joined specifically to pick up some inking tips. Um, so I thought I would record my progress on this job here. I'm doing the inking for an illustration. It's a, a Playbill poster. So that's for a play, a poster for a play. Uh, and uh, I've got a lot of hatching and detail work to do here. I've actually, this is the bottom half of a larger piece. And uh, I've got the top half up here. I could have done this maybe on one large 11 by 17 piece, but I wanted to work even bigger because this is ultimately going to get blown up to be in like metro stations and things. So it's got to be huge. So just to support that resolution, I'm breaking it up into pieces and inking it in two halves. Um, just a little have the fine detail resolution to look good when it's blown up big. You can kind of get away with that sometimes with smaller work and just ink with this finer pen and things. But I'm already using a fine brush. This is a Pentel pigment brush. I could probably maybe use an even finer dip brush, but uh, or I could go with pen, but I wanted to kind of use brush for this. I wanted that organic feel. And uh, you can see I've already gotten a good start. And it, working smaller is possible, but it's just really a pain in the ass, frankly. It's very, very tight, very detail-y. And I wanted to be relaxed and fluid with this work, so that wasn't conductive to it. Um, a lot of this is going to be hatch work. Feathering. So what I'm doing is feathering, which means that you're kind of doing this downward motion instead of just dropping the brush and dragging on the paper. You're scooping. And you'll notice that I'm coming down to the base of the stroke. You can go the other way, but just for me personally, I find I have more control going this direction, this way. Um, that comes up occasionally, like which direction you should do. There's a few tips. So there's definitely a couple of tricks that do help now and then, like uh, I've mentioned in other videos. If you're doing curves, pull a curve, push a line. That has to do with just the way your hand's wired. It's easier to do a controlled arc this way than to do it this way. It's almost always more wobbly, and mostly has to do with the way your hand's wired. You've got more fine motor control bringing your fingers in than you do have from releasing, opening your prom out. Um, so you don't have to do it that way. Like if you're using your wrist, you can get a pretty consistent curve either way. But if you're using your fingers, your knuckles, pull the curve, push the line. But that's not really why I'm doing this, because I'm not doing, these have a bit of a curve to them, but I'm not really doing curves. I just find it's easier to get a nice fine start and end thick and do a control that way. If I go thick to thin, I can do that, but I have less control over the length of the stroke. One thing my, my new patron student, my new student patron, sent me samples of their work. And one thing I would mention directly to them that I noticed in their stuff that I would say also is a general good piece of advice to people inking is some of their lines looked a little Here's a bit of a drawing here I can do some inking on. This sort of, this guy's ear here. You know, it took a little time to do that. If you're trying to get the line right, there's a contradicting couple of things I'm going to say here. One is, you don't want to be tracing. So when you're tracing, when you go to tracing mode, you're much more careful. You're like this carefully. I've got a lot of experience, so I can go slow like that and not get too shaky, but sooner or later I'm going to get a wobbly hand and make a mistake and just not get a line I like. So you'll notice that I go just a little bit faster, not too slow, not too fast. That speed is a little bit of a, a personal thing, and it has to do with experience too, so at fir first it's going to be a slower speed, but you do want to avoid being too slow 
and not too fast. Kind of maintain control. Don't rush it, but don't seize up either. And even if you're going super slow, the real key difference is don't tense up. Keep your hand relaxed. That's the real thing. It's not so much even the speed as it is that your hand is intense. You don't your muscles aren't clenching because if they're clenching, they're resisting the fluid movements you're trying to make. And then it's where you get the shaky stuff the most. All right? So you do those fine details and or smooth longer strokes a lot better if your hand isn't all frozen up and tense. And then for these strokes, you'll see I'm kind of batching them. I'm trying to get patterns. You'll also notice these are shorter than these. That has a lot to do with the fact that I'm trying to create a dense, dark shadow without filling it in here. But I also want a lot of texture and pattern. That's easier to do with some shorter strokes. And um, yeah, go back to that tip to my new student patron. I noticed that they were kind of rushing the ends of lines. So they were getting a lot of that kind of little flicks, flicking at the end. That's what I want to get at. They're kind of flicking at the end, which is sort of like a little flourish. And there are some situations where you might want to do that. But in general, I wouldn't make a habit of that. That's not something you want to do habitually. Um, only do it when you need to. And you definitely don't want to be doing it probably like when you're in the middle of drawing someone's thigh or something that has a very clean contour. So I have a figure here. I'm probably going to... I'll use the brush on some of it, but I'm kind of really going to switch away from the brush when I get to her because I want even finer control there. A little filling in happening there, but not by intention. This is all going to get ink washed, and also I'll be doing some work with white paint on it. I'm going to do it all in gray values and tones and ink, and then add, there's going to be color, but I'm going to add that in Photoshop by tinting the values and filling. But like I might use this fill but if I want to open it up again I can do that with white paint I am trying to get a feeling of her shadow spreading out so I might fill a little bit basically I'm going by my eye a little here and there's a trick because on one hand I like working in black and white and getting my values down that way and then turning into color. But when you're working in color, you also want to leave room for the color. Whereas when you're doing actually work for black and white, you you fill everything in. And the trick about rendering the way I am, starting with ink and gray values and then coloring digitally, is it is easy to over ink. But like I said, I'm going to be doing wash and then work with uh, white paint. Usually I use something like this, uh, Bleed Proof White. A couple of brands of that. This is the Dollar, sorry, the Dr. P.H. Martins. I also have Dollar Rally. Um, there's some other brands, but that's the stuff I like using the most. I also use a Pentel Presto Pen quite a bit, but I'm careful about that because the wash doesn't go over it very much. It resists everything. It's white out. So... depends on the work I'm doing but for something like this I'm gonna be careful about doing it anywhere where I'm gonna ink wash as well I might use it out here because there isn't gonna be ink wash in this part of the paper so if I made some ink marks here I would use the whiteout on that um, I also rotate this a lot like I'm working on it this way quite a bit the way you, you just saw it is that actually the direction this is gonna be the ogre's face and the plants is upside down so notice that 
I'm going from tip to base still, although now I'm stroking away from me, so myself to do that. So again, it's I find it easier to get a nice fine line start if I, if I do that rather than flicking out to a fine line. You can do it both ways, and depending on the results you want, either can work. But I find I have more control this way personally. Generally, rotating your work is also a good way to see it with new eyes. Um, so it's very, very much the same as like using a mirror uh, or in Photoshop, rotating and flipping your art to see how it looks because when you're looking at it especially for a long time it's easy to sort of stop seeing asymmetries or weird glitches by flipping it and reversing it things pop out so I don't have the option of doing that in Photoshop when I'm working on paper like this but I have mirrors by my desk but you should always you should, I recommend you always have a mirror next to your drafting table maybe handheld I've got little ones little shaving mirror and I've got a big one on the wall next to me so I've got a few different ways to, to pick it up and check out how it looks and then just rotating it turning it upside down helps a lot too also just step up stand up every once in a while it's good to stretch don't get hunched over and stuck in one position all day you'll end up like a troll um, and then take that opportunity to look at your work at arm's length. Squint your eyes, turn it upside down. Anything to kind of recontextualize it and see at a, a, at a new perspective and at arm's length. So that the overall impression, when you're up close to it like this, you, you start just seeing the strokes and the lines and the little bits and all the things that frustrate you for whatever reason, which Maybe there's a good reason they frustrate you, but there's a very good chance you're just too close to it. And then that leads to being kind of hypercritical and not really seeing it with honest eyes. I almost always work with some music on, by the way, when I'm inking. When I'm penciling or writing, I often turn it uh, off, but inking is very meditative and less pr process heavy for the brain. So I'll have music on, and I actually do right now. I've got headphones on so that I don't have to worry about YouTube flagging this video for copyright. So I like having the stereo on. Yes, Oscar. My cat is clawing at my back now. Is it dinner time? Or is it just because I'm talking to someone and not paying attention to you? Could be that. So for this one thing about this kind of feathering stroke, I was mentioning this today. I have just started a new semester in my classes. You definitely want to relax and not rush them to get them just right. A lot of times you will, you'll see people going to try to get it over with really quick. So they're like, do really quick. Do, 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 do. You get irregular strokes. You also see a lot of this little check marks because you're not lifting up enough. And the back stroke, the return stroke, gets caught. So relax. Don't rush it. I'm also looking over here and I'm trying to mirror, I don't want to copy exactly, but I want to mirror the density and sort of the patterns we see. I think my strokes are getting a little too fine there. With one or two strokes off, that's okay. There's gonna be so many of them with something like the pattern I'm doing now that you're not going to see. That's probably enough for this short clip. What, 
last tip. I say this about a lot of things, but I'm going to say it again. One of the uh, things to remind yourself when you're working on something is not to be too hyper wound up and self critical. Uh, and don't be a perfectionist because perfect isn't really possible. But more importantly, your idea of perfect is not the same as your viewers. Most of your viewers are, are going to be looking at your work to play along. They're participating in the, the exercise of the entertainment, the storytelling if you're doing stories, the delivery of an idea or a message. They're not looking for your mistakes. They're not looking to check your perspective or whether your your feathering strokes are, are as elegant as they could be or whether you got everything just right. They're not sitting there with a ruler. So keep that in mind and don't overwork it or overworry it. By God, for God's name, put on some good music and enjoy yourself. Just make an art. It's important, but it's not that important. It's not worth stressing out or engaging in self-loathing. Have fun and keep doodling.